I'm going to teach you about, I'm just, this teaching will be aimed for singles today. It's for you singles. You want to find love in your life. Okay, so those of you who became saved, Bible-believing Christians, I'm sure you understand how hard it is to find the right person, right? <laughs> because Bible believers are like a dime in a dozen, or it's smaller than that, right? Really small. The world is huge and vast. So they have all the options of finding their own spouse. Whereas Bible believers, they're just like a small little dot. Amen. And then what you're trying to do is you're trying to find the love of your life within what range? This big range? No, within this small range here. <laughs> now, you, you, you might, that's why. Not funny. <laughs> Now, think about it. Isn't the temptation great now to go to where? That's a good yeah. teaching. Yeah. Yeah. Because look how big it is. And look how small your options are. See? So I want to give a teaching that will help you uh, find the love of your life, so to speak. All right? <laughs> and try to encourage you. Okay? Try to encourage you. Now, the first thing to understand is this. Is that I believe that this is the number one problem. Now, you, you don't want to hear this, but it will be the most helpful for you to find love life. Your, your problem is you're all living in a fantasy. Now that's your number one problem. You might say, why is that, preacher? I'm going to find me a beautiful, drop-dead, <laughs> gorgeous stud or woman. I'm going to look for one who loves Jesus Christ, loves God's word, and will attend a Bible-believing church and is willing to work her way for the Lord. And she has a great character, too. Good luck, man. Good luck. God bless you. What, what, how are you going to find one like that? Now, keep your hand in Ecclesiastes 1. Look at Proverbs 31. huh? Proverbs chapter 31. Verse 10. Who can find a what? Virtuous woman. For a price is far above rubies. Look at that. What are the chances of finding that? See, you want, uh, I'm going to, uh, no problem, I'm going to find me a rich girl and I'll turn out fine. And she's got to have a great character, beautiful looks, and look, look, bro, you're not going to find one like that, okay? That's not reality, okay? So the problem is, is that, you know what, now let me ask you this question. Where did you get that idea from? Yeah. I think you maybe looked at too many magazines. <clears throat> you watch too much television. They're not going to put an ugly actress over there on the screen, okay? They're not going to put an ugly actress there. They're not going to put an ugly actor there, too. They deliberately go through a huge screening process to find the best one for the role. You think you're going to get a woman like that, a guy like that? Good luck, man. So you see, you got to realize you got to get outside of that fantasy. Now, here's the number one thing that is going to be very helpful for you. So your hand is at Ecclesiastes 1, right? Keep it there and go to 1 Corinthians 7. 1 Corinthians 7. You know what you don't want to do? You don't want to pay the price. Marriage is not about what pleases you. It's paying the price. You're going to have to sacrifice appearance or some character defect or a financial defect or your own standards of your own fantasy of a husband or a wife. You're going to have to lower those standards and give up those standards and be willing to pay the price. Now, you know what the problem with, you know why this is evidence of fantasy? It's not just Bible believers. You think that if you're in here, you'll have better luck? No. This world so vast, they also have this problem too. You know why? It's now 50% of Americans went through divorce. That's huge, man. We're getting more and more prone into a fantasy, not into a reality. Majority of Americans don't want to pay the price in marriage. See that? 
you don't want to go uh, because their jobs conflict, their dreams conflict, their goals conflict, et cetera, et cetera. See, it's, you thought you got the right person, didn't you? No, nope, that's not how it works. That's a fantasy. Do you think when you first date the person that the person is going to show you all the defects of his or her side? No, they're going to be smooth with you. They're going to try to impress you. They're going to fool you into this fantasy. This is me. You know what? The, let me add this too. Man, i got to be wise about the time, but I, I'm saying a lot of important gold here. The greatest evidence is Hollywood celebrities. See, even if you get the looks like the Hollywood stars, how many of them always divorce? Like, like I'll be safe and generous. Nearly all of them. But, I, <laughs> but you know, some of my members believe it's all of them. Yeah, just to be safe. Yeah, just to be safe. But, you know, my personal opinion is definitely all of them. I knew that when they cu those couples got together, I was like, give it 10 years. It's always that kind of a gap, five or 10 years. Didn't you know there are some who only got married within one day and they divorced? Yeah. Famous actors, famous actresses. Jonah Hill married this girl, got divorced within the, the honeymoon or within several days after the marriage. You see, it's not all about your, it's not as ideal as you think. You th so let's assume that you're not in this small little circle. You're over here. It's not going to get any better. This is the number one most helpful thing. you got to be willing to pay the price. Some of the people who I counseled here in this church, they even realize the vanity of beauty, the vanity of their own ideal. You know why? It goes away. It goes away. And then when it goes away, how are you going to stick to that spouse then that you, you're supposed to love if those ideals are gone? If that fantasy is gone now, how are you going to stick to that husband, that wife? Unless you have the willingness to pay the price to begin with, then you will stick to the person you love. All right, so I told you to turn to 1 Corinthians 7 as well. So I'm spending so much time on this one because uh, I'm trying to make you understand something. So let's read this quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 first. And look at verse... 27, art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be what? Loose. Art thou loose from a wife? Seek not a wife. Let's also uh, look at some more verses right here. Verse 12, but to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any man hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him what? Not put her away. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her what? Not leave him. Pay the price. That's what God wants you to do. Pay the price. What God hath joined together, Genesis chapter 1, let not who make it asunder? Man. Man. Is it your job that made it asunder? Is it uh, her appearance, her fault that made it asunder? His appearance that made it asunder? Is it... Uh, his uh, life career, his goal, her goal, her life career, the one that caused it asunder, or you? You caused it to make it asunder. See, you're the problem. You're in that fantasy. Ecclesiastes 1. Well, if I get that woman, I know I will hit it. Solomon <coughs> went through a thousand. He didn't hit one. <laughs> you think you can have it made then after that? Solomon's a king, man. He had a thousand, man. Yeah, yeah amen. <laughs> brother, and amen. See, that's the uh, number. See, you have to understand this first. See, pay the price. I told you this is going to be the hardest point, but it's the most helpful. Well, Ecclesiastes, notice what King Solomon said. We'll look at chapter 2, chapter 2, verse 10. And whatsoever my eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was what? Vanity and what? Vexation of spirit. And there was no profit under the sun. Look at that. All that he had, all that he owned, 
brought no joy in his heart. But in Ecclesiastes, he pointed out that the women did not give him joy either. I kind of wonder that he did give him joy. They did. Yeah, did. All right. So you're in a fantasy. All right. Another thing is this. Reality. So what you've got to do is this. Is that if you want to get the girl and the guy, you've got to realize this. They've got the same expectations as you do. So here's the thing, okay? You're not some princess in a story who's going to get some kind of Prince Charming all of a sudden. Now, here's the thing, though, is that people have those kind of lens. So if they have those kind of expectations, what you've got to do is this. You've got to be the one that's got to look good. You've got to be the person that people want. It's a matter of fact, if you're going to look beautiful, then you're going to have people that want you. It's a matter of fact that if you're going to work out, have a nice body, there's going to be some people who are more attracted to you. It's a matter of fact, if you've got a lot of money in the bank, a lot of people are going to be attracted to you. If you're very smart and have several degrees, you're going to have several people attracted to you. That's a matter of fact. You might say, uh, no, I don't believe that. No, you believe that, because why else right now you would be sensitive about how you look, mm -hmm. how you're dressed? Why would you be that sensitive if you didn't really believe that? See, it's a matter of fact. Everyone knows deep down inside their heart they got to look good. So when you're talking to a person, you can't just be weird. Now, you Bible believers, you got to understand this, man. You Bible believers... <laughs> Got to understand this. You can't be weird, man. You can't be weird, okay? You got to be smooth, okay? You got to be smooth, okay? You can't just go up to a girl and then tell her that because you're a cat that you're going to burn in hell for all the eternity, okay? That's not going to work. That's not smooth, okay? So you got to realize this. You got to be smooth. You got to be a good, you got to be a person that a person will find attraction to. Well, I'm ugly. Hey, man, didn't you know that if you uh, put the effort in getting the right clothes, in looking good, and working out, I don't care how bad your genetics are, you're going to catch somebody. Now I'm, trying to, now, I'm trying to tell you something here. There is no excuse that works for you that everybody hates you, yeah. that no one likes you. No, there is someone out there, but you're not using the means to become the person. All right? A lot of people, that's why they'll do some kind of dumb plastic surgery. That's really bad in Korea. Okay? So they do that because they're not, because they're trying to look like this Barbie doll fantasy. Now, you got to realize this, is that you can't do some kind of uh, fake, cheap way like that. you got to use the means that God has given to you. Now, what God has given to you, now work on it. He's giving you an opportunity. We stress a lot about proper dressing, not looking like the world, but that does not mean we want you to look ugly for crying out loud, okay? My goodness, people say, they just want me to look like an Amish when I come into church. You know what your problem is? You're back into fantasy. That's not what we are, okay? See, cuckoo, cuckoo, that's the problem. All right, so the point is this, is that be smooth, okay? What is it that you can do to attract a person? Use a little bit of humor. Be normal. Be kind. Be interesting. What they love. What they like. Look good. Have good breath when you talk to them. All right? Don't be weird. That's reality. Now, another thing is this. You've got to be honest, but you've got to be wise about it. Okay? You've got to be wise. You can't just be too frank, you know? you got to be wise about it. Yeah. You gotta be wise. Hey, how did I get these people online? Oh, good. See, I use wisdom. See, did I get you through a long word called dispensationalism, or was it Satan has a son and he's here? Who is he? And then you got sucked in. See, <laughs> it was Doctor Gene Kim, UC Berkeley, and PBI. See, that's the thing. Is that now? Am I lying? No, I'm not lying. But see, it's being wise. 
That's good. You got to be realistic. You got to realize what is people's ideals. Now, this is especially important for you internet people. Internet people have a problem of their own kind of world. Yeah. Okay, you've been watching too much of this, and you think that your own kind of character is going to somehow attract a person. Mm -hmm. And if no one's attracted to you, you feel like that you're the most miserable person, you're the most ugly person, you're the most lonely person, you're the only Bible believer, and you will never find love. That is wrong. If you put the effort, you will catch somebody out there. And you got to be wise when you talk to the person, too. Now, here's another thing is you got to take the initiative. You know, you know what people don't do? They don't take the initiative. They think that somehow, in some way, God's going to dump down some kind of supermodel from heaven who's going to be King James only, dispensational. <laughs> That's not how it works. Okay? You've got to take the initiative yourself. Okay? You've got to take the initiative of getting a wife. You want Bible? Isaac got a great wife because he had somebody going traveling on the other side of the world to get a good woman for him. Yeah. You've got to take the initiative. Well, I'm ugly. I'm not good looking. You'd be surprised if you take the initiative. There's this one person, okay, at Pensacola Bible Institute, and he did not look good. He was not a good looker, okay? But you know what? He came across this girl at the mall, and she was, I'll be honest, she was good looking, okay? So then when he hit on her, you know what he did? He took the initiative, but he was also being what? He was trying to be the person. But when he took the initiative, he was being wise about it. So what he did was, is that, oh, it's such a smooth move. You know, it was like saying, he was dressed up like, you know, like a guy who worked there almost. So he said, can I help you find something? And she was like, oh, I need to find a certain shoe. And then he was like taking her there, trying to fit in shoes. But then it was all, she it was all clumsy. It didn't work out. And then she obviously knew that. But she was playing along. Because why? It attracted her. And then he said at the end, I'll be honest with you. I don't work here. I'm just doing this because I think you're attractive. Would you go out with me? She went out with him. Now, here's another thing. What he did was, see, he was being smooth and natural. After that, he took her to the last church you would want to take to, Dr. Ruffin's <laughs> church. And Dr. Ruffin's a blunt person, man. <clears throat> but you know what? She sat in there. Not only that, she sat in PBI classes. Wow. You know what happened after that? She got saved. She became a Bible believer. She got married at Dr. Ruffman's church. Wow. Did that guy? Did that guy? <laughs> <laughs> there are some, now, I know that there are some people in my church, even in my church as well, and in my home church. I've been through several churches. They've done the same thing too. That's why they got the woman or the guy they wanted. Well, I'm too ugly. No, you'd be surprised. That there are sometimes pretty people who are attracted to that. See, but you've got to try to be the person. You've got to take the initiative. <coughs> all right? You've got to take the initiative. Isaac took the initiative, all right? Why? He was smooth, man. He didn't trump his own horn. He had some servant trumping about his horn right yeah. there. And greatest thing, he's rich. He's famous. He owns a lot of cattle. You know, he loves God. She went for that. So take the initiative. You've got to be wise about it. See? So when you're trying to be the person and you're taking the initiative, you obviously have to use wisdom to catch the person. So here's the thing is that obviously when you come up to the person, you obviously don't say, will, will you marry me? I know some PBI students didn't have common sense and they just said that to the girl on the first day. <laughs> she spit out food from her mouth after that. So the thing is, is that obviously you got to be natural and smooth. So like, uh, uh, so just get, let me give you some examples here, okay? So then there were some girls actually that actually I went out with because they didn't come out and just say blatantly like, uh, you know, uh, will you marry me? Will you go out with me or something like that? And when I did that to the girls, it wasn't that way either. You got to understand this is that how we did it was something natural, something comfortable, okay? It's probably asking an honest biblical question first. 
and then asking more biblical questions. And then it develops into friendship. And then after that, then you can catch the intimacy there after that. And once you see glimpses of intimacy, then you can actually break the ice. Will you go out with me, et cetera, et cetera. So you got to take the initiative and you got to realize the reality, but all that culminates with wisdom. All that culminates with wisdom. Some people, you got to realize, well, I don't have that, Pastor. Well, see, that's why you got to get out of your house. You got to <laughs> deal with real life people. You know, look, I never, let me encourage you. If this is any encouragement, so this, if this is any encouragement, this, I'm no, getting late. No, I'm getting no, late. No. If this is any encouragement to you, all right, if this is any encouragement to you, um, I'm not a smooth guy, all right? <laughs> during my whole teenage life, during my whole teenage life, I never dated. All right. During my whole teenage life, and even in my early twenties, I never dated, and I did not have the common sense of people. But you know how I became. Uh, I'm not saying I'm smooth, okay? But I did, okay? I did win a few points, obviously. On, I was wise. It. I was smooth. Why? Because of dealing with real life people. Mm -hmm. How many different people of different backgrounds and cultures and age groups have I seen in church? Hmm. School, I went to college, okay? I got a gist of the people over there. See, you got to, that's why I stress so much about attending a Bible believing church. Mm -hmm. You can get a common sense of different people over there after that. So what you've got to do is that if you want to develop something, that's why to find the right woman, obviously then, is what we talked about. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 then, right? We won't turn there for time's sake because I spend so much time doing babble, babble. But Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, if you're going to find the Bible believer, who you got to go to then? Bible believers, that's simple. Assemble with saved Christians. Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of some is, but exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. If you do that, you get better chances of finding a Bible believer in there. Now, I want to say this with caution. The caution is, is that uh, I do not recommend uh, social media to find the right person, but you got to realize that there are some people who found the right person through social media as well. Because why? They're trying to find a saved believer somewhere. They're trying to assemble with some kind of saved believer out there. I had family members or friends who knew of a girl, and they hooked me up with them. How did that happen? Because I assembled with the saved believer. So you got to, uh, if you want to find a Bible believer, you got to connect to a Bible believer. In church, uh, caution, caution with the internet. Or with other Bible believers that you know of. Here's another thing. Is that uh, they're not going to come out the way like you are. King James only, dispensational and all that. So you got to realize that uh, they're not going to be like that. So you got to realize the reality is that it's too big of a world. So take the initiative. And with wisdom, make them grow to become like you. And then once you get them to become like you, you draw the line then. You tie the knot in marriage and dating after that. Because, well, the world is wicked. Yeah, I know. But you won't know until you get to know them, until you work with them. See? So that's why it's important that you either find it among safe Christians here. And if you're going to go out into the real world, you got to be wise about it. And you got to face the reality of it. And naturally work with them to become a Bible believer. Now, there was this one person that I knew at church. She married this person through online, and I felt very uneasy because it was too soon. It was too soon. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, uh, you know, let's take some time and all that, but the person didn't listen. Guess what? The person already had a wife in North Carolina. It was horrible. So what you need as well is this, is that this is the most important point, and then we'll close, all right? <laughs> You need approval. By who? God? And, and you know what? <laughs> you got the church. This is extremely important. And the lady's father. <laughs> the lady's father. Yeah, the parents do. <laughs> 
well, that's between them and God, you know. <laughs> but anyway, so the approval is this, is that you got to get God and the church involved. Why? Because you got to realize this. Just because you're involved with that person, that person may not be good for you. So there are fellow pastors who counsel many different marriages and seeing ruined homes. They'll say that's not the right person for you. You got to be more cautious about that. That's why God laid out rules right here. Don't marry an unbeliever. Because he knew what will happen at the end. See, so you got to get approval by God and the church. If you don't do that, that's why I really believe in uh, pastors uh, doing the weddings. See, because it's a, it's a public act that the pastor approved of it and the church approved of it. That is very important is that you get God and the church's approval. Because the thing is, if you don't get their approval, why are they, why do you need their approval? Because there's a spiritual reason behind it. You don't understand. Now, here's one thing that uh, I want to say this. I'm going to give a personal testimony of myself. This is why this is a very different teaching. So I gave you a few glimpses of myself here. But let me say this for those people who are discouraged online. Well, I still think that I can't find the right person, all right? Look, I've done all these steps too, okay? And I had chances with uh, several women, but that didn't work out. Do you know why? It's because I thought what would be right in God's eyes in the future and how the church would approve of it. That's why. Here's another thing, is that there are some women who are Bible believers, and then I could have tied the knot. But then I realized that they don't have, they're not able to become a pastor's wife because I went through a lot of hurt. And my wife is going to face a lot of hurt too. But the kind of character and personality she had was not going to be one that would fit the role of a pastor's wife. So to, for their betterment, to rescue their life, is that I would have to break it off. Why can't you be like uh, the other person who took the initiative, right, with a uh, an unbeliever growing them up to become a Bible believer. I could probably do that, but I can't uh, do that as frequent as you. You guys have more freedom to do that than I do. You know why? Because how will I be known then to my church? A pastor who's trying to hit on girls. What if I use social network to hook me up with one? A pastor who's going through social media to hook up with one. There's more hope for you than for me, you don't understand. Because a pastor's life is an extreme burden and limitation. <clears throat> and I did everything that I could. I tried to look real good. And then, you know, I graduated from Berkeley. My family background had a lot of wealth. But my dad gave that up and became a pastor. But some of my relatives, you don't understand, they were really, really rich. So when my dad forsook that to live in a small little apartment that had no air conditioning... That was quite a sacrifice. You guys seen me sacrifice living in a small shack for two years. Because why? My love is more extreme for God and say Amen. believers, the body of Christ, yeah. than what pleases my flesh. Amen. And that's the ultimate thing. And if you have that kind of heart, do you think God is going to let you down? Perhaps, perhaps a person will be single for her life or the rest of his life. Perhaps uh, they will uh, have a person that doesn't suit their standard or level, but trust me on this one, okay? You have the perfect one that you thought you got. If it's not under the approval of God and the church, you're going to be like those Hollywood celebrities who are miserable and they divorce within a short time, even if you have everything perfect. But if you have the approval of God and the church, they will never let you down. Amen. Now, of course, there are some say believers in the body of Christ who did let me down, but overall... The entirety, the overall Bible-believing body of Christ, as well as God himself, they never let me down all this time. See, that's the reason why I know that I am all right in Jesus Christ. See? It can be discouraging that when you fit out everything, you know, the good looks, the money, and the education, and then uh, if you can sing, and if you have some kind, uh, some kind of uh, smooth skills in talking... That a girl will be interested in you, or a guy would be interested in you, and then when they hear that you're a pastor, I had that happen. So look, 
here's the thing, is that during my teenage years and early 20s, I was unable uh, to date. And then other girls that had the opportunity, it didn't work out. But see, I did not live in fear during my early 20s. You know why? I knew everything was going to be all right. Amen. And God will not let me down. If I had that much faith in God during my early 20s to send me the right person, and I had more of a disadvantage playing than you guys, there's more hope for you. There's more hope for you. All right, so I hope that this will be a help to you.